Alright, what's going on everybody, and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we are jumping into X-Force, issue number 31, Judgment Day tie-in. Now, if you guys caught the last issue of X-Force, it was also a tie-in, but it was very loosely tied in. This one is a little bit more tied in, but it really is focusing on Craven the Hunter. Just recently, we saw him picking up the pieces of dead and overhearing a discussion inside of a bar he hears that mutant kind really has become the apex predator of this planet. Craven believing that he was out of challenges. He now faces one of the greatest predators he will ever go against. That of course are the mutants. Now make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive through this issue, we are starting with Craven the Hunter, wearing the bear that he just recently killed, making his way through this icy land. When it comes to being a hunter, when it comes to taking down the greatest of all things, Craven the Hunter is almost like a religious zealot, that this is his religion, this is his culture, this is everything that he is. And while thinking to himself, he does bring up the fact that he is a clone. While most people are brought into this world through blood and, and screaming, his was brought in through pain and confusion. But something is happening, something that makes a birth or rebirth very possible. Believing that all the power structures, they were violently realigned the second the Celestial announced itself to the world. And now standing here naked in front of the Celestial, he announces himself to the progenitor. Yo, and I give props to Craven the Hunter because there is no way I would be in the Arctic but freaking naked. Now, this is when we jump over to Krakoa. Black Tom letting them know that there is some trouble. Now, they are in the midst of an eternal invasion, but that's not the trouble he speaks of. Right now, there is a giant cargo ship that is headed directly for the island. With Beast and Sage showing up on site, they are about ready to lay down some hate on who whoever it is that is planning to attack them. But what we learn is that this is no invasion. This is in fact Omega Red, making his way back from the Arctic. He had gone to rescue this boatload of people that had been kidnapped. Of course, this isn't necessarily what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to go drop them off somewhere else. Because Beast, being the CIA of the X-Men, he had every intention of this being a giant propaganda event. He wanted as many any cameras on this is possible, showing that not only did Omega Red rescue these people, but he is part of mutant kind. He is part of the nation of Krakoa. Mutants save these humans, and with how much bad publicity they are currently getting, this would have been huge for them. Sage also reminding Beast that this was a test for Omega Red, to see if he could truly work with Krakoa, if he could listen to orders and do what needed to be done. Now, of course, they don't know what happened to Deadpool, but he did get the mission done. As Omega Red hops off this boat, he takes the head trafficker with him, the one that had been human trafficking all of these people, saying that he will be dealt with very quickly. Not a single one of them try to stop Omega Red. They are gonna let him take this guy off, take him into the woods, and straight up murder him. Now, as we head back over to the Arctic, we have Craven the Hunter standing in front of the Progenitor. At first, he demands for his judgment. He demands for some kind of fight. He gets to the point where he demands just to be acknowledged. To the Celestial, he might as well not exist. This is what he came for though. He came for reassurance. To remind him that the world is a cold, indifferent place. Just like he has always believed. And that the truth is, the Void does not care. The world goes on. Natural disasters happen. Mass wars go on. People die. But as somebody that has been a clone, that is a clone, he can see more clearly the absence of a loving creator. Knowing that this god has died before and it will die again. Because that is the inevitable truth of all universes 
universal things, of the universe itself. It is the cycle that continues on, carving an X into his hand, saying that he will write his own scripture, carving it into the skin of all mutants, all who would play God. And this is what I mean when I say that Craven the Hunter, he really is a religious zealot when it comes to his need for superiority, the need to be noticed, the need for the world and for himself to know that he is the best. As we jump over to the point, we pick up with Sage and Omega Red. We see Sage, she has been heavily drinking. She's actually more or less likely been becoming an alcoholic. And while they still are in the midst of an invasion from the Eternals, she wants to take Omega Red to a kind of special location because she really wants this all to work out with Omega Red. She wants Omega Red to get that second chance, just like every Everybody else has. You know, we're gonna completely look over the fact that he just murdered a guy, but she takes him to the shadow room. A and let me reiterate, I am not upset that he killed a human trafficker, but it does go against the laws of Krakoa. But I think we can mostly assume that a lot of these laws have been stepped all over, thrown to the side, you know, uh, a lot of people, we see favoritism, especially with Charles Xavier and those in his inner circle. But Sage has brought him here to the shadow room because because in this place, your imagination is everything. You can go anywhere you want to go. You can do anything you want to do, and you kill anybody you would like to kill. The most brutal, the most savage, the most serial killer ways. You can do anything you want here. Sage wants Omega Red to have an outlet, knowing that those instincts inside of him, that lust for murder, that's something that they're not going to be able to tame, but maybe they can give him a release so that he is not out here murdering other mutants or humans. And so she is going to give him a couple hours every night to do whatever he wants to do. Taking us over to the Arctic North inside of Craven's hunting lodge. He has made his way back after his meeting with the Celestial. Taking his most recent catches, he takes the head of the polar bear, he sticks Deadpool's head inside of it, and he mounts it onto his wall. This is his first trophy, but this is also where he begins to study mutant kind, study the island study their gateways, study their surveys, and all of their maps. He knows the water sources, the weather patterns, the topography, and all of the vegetation. He studies them inside and out, all of their strengths, all of their vulnerabilities. His most favorite part of this whole process is gathering, oiling, and honing his entire arsenal. All of the weapons that he is going to use, he sharpens them. He makes sure that they are in prime condition. Now, while all of this is happening, we see the hand of Deadpool make its way out of his bag, and it heads over to get his head. As Craven goes on with his own narrative, talking about how these weapons are extensions of himself. Like I said, it's just huge religious zealot type of behavior. Completely unaware of the hand that that is getting the head of Deadpool. As it falls down to the ground, Craven the Hunter jumps up to look around, and what we see is the hand of Deadpool with the head of Deadpool making its way across the floor. Of course, Craven the Hunter, he is so happy about this. He really wants to earn his trophies. Getting tripped up, he is even more excited because he sees that Deadpool's body is pretty much put back together. Extremely happy because now, now he gets the pleasure of hacking him up yet again. And so with Deadpool getting his form back, we are picking up at the Green Lagoon. We have a conversation between Beast and Sage. The two of them, they don't really talk on a, a personal level. Usually it just has to do with what is going on and what mission is currently ongoing. But he is letting her know that some of the refugees that they brought to the island, these humans that had been saved by Omega Red, some have already burglarized the Summer's home. Another had assaulted Glob. What he is saying, though, is that he would like to reconsider the policy of just allowing anybody sanctuary on the island that would like it. Of course, this would be up to the council, but, but Beast believes that it shouldn't be. He believes that it should be up to him, because he is the one that deals with the security of Krakoa. But Beast really is seeing the glass half full, Sage reminding him that one of those individuals that was rescued, the refugees, 
One was a teacher, one was a doctor, the kids are out there playing with the other kids. It's not all bad. You continue to look through your scarred eye. And Beast is letting Sage know that she really has changed. That he doesn't even recognize who she is anymore. Sage would remind him that a lot of people say the same thing about him. And that the island is always changing. Maybe, just maybe, this is also changing them. But Sage does feel like she is starting to recognize herself. Even though she definitely is becoming an alcoholic. Heavily drinking. And I think, I think this is because she's starting to get a conscience. She's starting to, to not really want to be on board with everything currently ongoing. Everything that Beast has been doing with the X-Force. All of their secrets, all of their scheming, all of, just all of it. I think it is finally starting to hit her. I think Sage is truly starting to break from having this job. Now, that's what takes us back over over to Craven and Deadpool. Craven is trying to get any information that he can about mutant kinds, about Krakoa, about who they are, so on and so forth. He's just trying to get every bit of information so he knows exactly who his enemy is. Now, Deadpool, he is not one to give up much information. Being his smart aleck self, doing the usual, just evading the question as much as possible. He also knows that Deadpool is not a mutant. So how is he able to live and work among them, spilling the beans that he is an honorary mutant? It took years of trying, but they finally gave him the keys to the kingdom. This is when Craven figures it out. He figures out how he is going to get inside of Krakoa, unable to go through the gateways. That is, unless you have a mutant with you. And so, gearing up, grabbing his weapons, and throwing Deadpool's head on a freaking spike, putting that spike onto his back, he is going to use this as a key to get into Krakoa. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, for me, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this issue. It was definitely a lot better than the last issue. I'm still a little upset that we haven't got, got back to uh, Wolverine and Kid Omega. I really want to know where Kid Omega is. It's starting to drive me crazy. He, he's honestly one of my favorite X-Men. So that's why I'm just so frantic on getting him back on scene. You know, in the last last issue, I, I compared Craven the Hunter to an assassin. That was poor judgment on my part. The only reason I say assassin is because they, they both hunt down individuals. Craven the Hunter, he goes and he hunts everything. Assassins, they mostly go after humans. This was not to belittle Craven the Hunter. I just think if he is going to go on to Krakoa, he's definitely going to get some low-end mutants. But at the end of the day, when we're talking about alphas and omegas, he's not going to be able to to bode well against any of them. Craven the Hunter is a very formidable individual, but we are talking about people that have powers of freaking gods. I think his biggest advantage is going to be the fact that everything is going on with Judgment Day. He's going to be able to get them while they're distracted. He is going to get them at their most vulnerable. But this does get me thinking. While everybody is distracted, everybody is focused on the Eternals and, and all these other crazy threats that they are also facing, which we saw in the X-Men series. That was the video that I just posted before this one. Could Craven the Hunter be the one to take away Resurrection from mutant kind. He has been studying them. He has been trying to understand them. The word is out. The secret about the five is out there. Is it possible that Craven the Hunter goes and takes out the five? Cuts mutant kind right at their freaking legs. I think it very likely could be a possibility, but it definitely looked like he was he was focused on Beast. At least that's what the panels were showing, that that might be his next target. Now, Beast had also mentioned inside of this comic how it would be a lot easier if he just made clones of himself. We have still yet to see the, the rise and fall, if you will, of Beast. You know, his story has kind of been hanging there, and we have seen him go on a real big decline, become more cynical, become just more evil. We are also seeing this take its toll on Sage. 
everything that they are doing, all of their secrets, all of their schemings, this stuff is eating her alive from the inside. It really does look like we are building up to something big. Possibly the, the dismantling of X-Force altogether. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything going on with X-Force as well as Judgment Day, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with Mutant Kind. Now, if you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. If you can't do that, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with that being said, until the next breakdown.